Kanto 2. Day was departing, and the embrowned air released the animals that are on earth from their fatigues, and I, the only one, made myself ready to sustain the war, both of the way and likewise of the woe, which memory the heirs not shall retrace. O muses, O high genius, now assist me. O memory, that this write down what I saw. Here thy nobility shall be manifest. And I began, Poet who guidest me, regard my manhood if it be sufficient. Heir to the art of his past, thou dost confide me. Thou sayest that of Silvius the parent, while yet corruptible unto the world immortal went, and was there bodily. But if the adversary of all evil was courteous, thinking of the high effect that issue would from him, and who, and what, to men of intellect unmeet it seems not. For he was of great Rome, and of her empire in the ephemeral heaven as her father chosen. The which and what, wishing to speak the truth, were established as the holy place wherein sits the successor of the greatest Peter. Upon this journey whence thou gives him vaunt, things did he hear which the occasion were both of his victory in the papal mantle. Thither went afterwards a chosen vessel, to bring back comfort hence upon that faith, which of salvation's way is the beginning. But I, why thither come, or who concedes it? I not Aeneas am, I am not Paul, nor I, nor others think me worthy of it. Therefore, if I resign myself to come, I fear the coming may be ill-advised. Thou art wise, and knowest better than I speak. And as he is, who unwills what he willed, and by new thoughts doth his intention change, so that from his design he quite withdraws. Such I became upon that dark hillside, because in thinking, I consumed that emprise, which was the very prompt of the beginning. If I have well thy language understood, reply the shade of the magnanimous, thy soul attained is with cowardice, which many times a man encumbers so, it turns him back from honored enterprise, as false sight doth a beast when he is shy. That thou mayest free thee from this apprehension, I'll tell thee why I came and what I heard at this first moment when I grieve for thee. Among those was I who are in suspense, and a fair saintly lady called to me in such wise I besought her to command me. Her eyes were shining brighter than the star, and she began to say, gentle and low, with a voice angelical in her own language. O spirit courteous of Mantua, of whom the fame still in the world endures, and shall endure long-lasting as the world. A friend of mine, and not the friend of fortune, upon the desert slope is so impeded upon his way, that he has turned through terror, and may, I fear, already be so lost, that I too late have risen to his succor, from that which I have heard of him in heaven. Bestir thee now, and with thy speech ornate, and with what needful is for his release, assist him so that I may be consoled. Beatrice am I, who bid thee go. I come from there where I would fain return. Love moved me, which compelleth me to speak. When I shall be in presence of my Lord, full often will I praise thee unto him. Then paused she, thereafter I began. O lady of virtue, thou alone through whom the human race exceedeth all contained within the heaven that has the lesser circles. So grateful unto me is thy commandment, to obey, if twere already done, were late. No farther needs thou ope to me thy wish. But the cause, tell me why thou dost not shun the here descending down into this center, from the vast place thou burneth to return to. Since thou wouldst fain so inwardly discern, briefly I will relate, she answered me, why I am not afraid to enter here. Of those things only one should be afraid, which have the power of doing others harm. Of the rest, no, because they are not fearful. God in his mercy is such created me, that misery of yours attains me not, nor any flame assails me of this burning. A gentle lady is in heaven, who grieves at this impediment, to which I send thee, so that stern judgment there above is broken. In her entreaty she besought Lucia, and said, Thy faithful one now stands in need of thee, and unto thee I recommend him. Lucia, 
full of all that cruel is, hastened away and came unto the place where I was sitting with the ancient Rachel. Beatrice, said she, the true praise of God, why succourest thou not him who loved thee so? For thee he issued from the vulgar herd. Dost thou not hear the pity of this plaint? Dost thou not see the death that combats him besides that flood where the ocean has no vaunt? Never were persons in the world so swift to work their wheel and to escape their woe as I, after such words as these were uttered. Came hither downward from my blessed seat, confiding in thy dignified discourse which honors thee, and those who have listened to it. After she thus had spoken unto me, weeping, her eyes shining, she turned away, whereby she made me swifter in my coming. And unto thee I came, as she desired. I have delivered thee from the wild beast, which bar the beautiful mountain's short ascent. What is it then? Why? Why dost thou delay? Why is such baseness bedded in thy heart? Daring and hardihood, why hast thou not, seeing that three such ladies benedite are caring for thee in the court of heaven, and so much good my speech doth promise thee? Even as the flowerets by nocturnal chill, bowed down and closed, when the sun widens them, uplifts themselves all open to their stems. Such I became with my exhausted strength, and such good courage to my heart there coursed, that I began like an intrepid person. O oh, she, compassionate, who has succored me, and courteous thou, who has obeyed so soon the words of truth which she addressed to thee. Thou hast my heart so with desire disposed to the adventure, with these words of thine, that to my first intent I have returned. Now go, for one soul will is in us both. Thou leader, and thou lord, and master thou. Thus I said to him, and when he had moved, I entered on the deep and savage way.